Today, I want to talk to you about Christian nationalism. Now, you may never have heard of that phrase before, or you may have, uh, but it's a pretty new term, and I want to explain it by means of a narrative. I want to tell you two stories, and I want to ask you to think with me about which one is true. And when I say true, I mean what actually corresponds to the facts, what actually is accurate in terms of reality. Now, both of these stories I'm going to tell you are about the country that I love. If you're an American, you love this country as well. So here we go. Story number one. In story number one, America is and always has been a Christian nation. We know this because the founders were devoted Christians. Therefore, God has uniquely favored America. Why would God not favor a country that began on Christian roots and actually was Christian? In this nation, a government has a purpose, and it is to pass laws that benefit, of course, all people, but especially Christians and churches. And in this first story, the church also has a role. It is to remind America that it's Christian and to return it to its Christian roots. All right, story two. America is and always has been a religiously neutral nation. We know this because the founders are a mixed bag in terms of their religious conviction. There were some devoted Christians. You no doubt have heard of the Puritans and the pilgrims that came to our country uh, back in the early 1600s. But remember, not all the people that came and settled our country from England were Puritans and pilgrims, and some of those who were were devoted Christians, and some of those just simply were religious in name only, right? So there were some devoted Christians. There were also some religious people, and when I think of religious people, I think of someone like one of my favorite national heroes, George Washington. Uh, if you read much about George Washington's life or read much of his writings, you find out that while he talked about God from time to time and the benevolent providence, uh, he seldom talked about Jesus maybe almost never. That gets very specific. That gets right down to Christianity and the particularity of Christ. But instead, he talked about this generic God. I think he was a gracious religious deist. Then also there were people who helped found our country who were out and out humanists. Ben Franklin uh, made no bones about it. He was not a follower of Christ. He didn't believe in Christianity, but he believed in a generic God. He was probably a deist as well. Thomas Jefferson was the same way. Now, I'm a big fan of Thomas Jefferson too. Uh, the American Phoenix is what one uh, biographer calls him. Jefferson, um, his genius is on display at Monticello. Having grown up in Virginia, I went to Monticello in fourth grade, seventh grade, and twelfth grade. And if you've never been, I hope you'll go. My wife and I were up in Virginia about five years ago uh, to see family and friends, and we went there one more time. And uh, I just say to you, his genius is on display. I'm glad he's a founding father. Glad he penned the Declaration of Independence. But he was not a fan of miracles or the supernatural or what we would call the heart of Christianity, Jesus being the Son of God. And so actually, he took his scissors to his New Testament and cut out everything in the Gospels that had to do with miracles. Uh, Google sometimes the Thomas Jefferson New Testament and look it up because it is on display in the Smithsonian. So our country actually, in story two, has a mixed bag on the Founding Fathers. God, in this view, has blessed America richly, who could deny it, but he also longs to bless all nations. In this view, the government's purpose is to pass laws that benefit not specifically Christians, but simply the common good. And finally, the purpose of the church is to influence Americans by speaking the truth and living in love. Now, I said Americans for a specific reason as opposed to America. And that's because now I want to talk to you about a particular um, understanding of America versus Americans. Right before I do that, let me just say that that first story, that's Christian nationalism. It's a popular story. I grew up with it. Maybe you or your parents or grandparents did. Uh, it's an attractive story. I mean, there are times I really want that to be true, and most likely some of you really want it to be true as well. But it's just not. It does not line up with the facts. It doesn't reflect reality as historians have discovered it. Every reputable historian I've ever read, and I've got two degrees in history, including an advanced degree that has a PhD after it in the area of history, all those historians indicate that Story one is not true. It does not comport with the facts. Story two is. So here's my assumption. It goes back to that statement about the purpose of the church is to influence Americans. My assumption is that a nation cannot be Christian. Only persons can be Christians. And I think you can argue this just by using common sense with everything else that's kind of along the lines of a nation, although on a smaller level, right? Let's argue from the lesser to the greater. A business cannot be Christian, although the workers might be, the managers might be, the board may be. A university cannot be Christian, 
Other students may be, professors may be, administrators may be. A sports team cannot be Christian, although players may be, coaches may be, owners may be. So arguing from the lesser to the greater, a nation cannot be Christian, although its citizens may be or may not be, and government leaders may be or may not be. So if you think that America is a Christian nation, I implore you to think differently, because I think only persons can be Christians. And if you've never thought America was a Christian nation, then you've got one Christian here uh, who's thought about this a lot, telling you that I agree with you. Second, I want to give you a challenge. I want to challenge you to speak and write only what you can verify is true. And by that, I mean stop creating or liking or sharing posts on social media that you can't verify is accurate. Man, we're in a crazy social media world, aren't we? Uh, I get so many things, and I have to evaluate quickly. Is it true or not? Am I going to delete it? Am I going to pass it on? And what I'm saying is, when you receive something, and you're not sure that it's true, don't pass it on. I actually think that if you and I did that, I mean, we would just end fake news forever. So I know that some of you may like what I said, and you're thankful for it. And you're thinking, man, I'm glad to hear somebody say that, or I've heard it before and I want to go Google some more things on this or check it out on YouTube and search it other places for Christian nationalism. Some of you may hate what I've said. I hope you don't hate me, but you can if you want. And you think I'm absolutely crazy. And some of you just aren't sure. This is new to you, you're processing, and you just want to think about it. Well, wherever you are, I hope you'll weigh intellectually what I've said. Again, thank you for watching. If you like this video, uh, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And for more content like this, make sure that you click subscribe button below and you'll be notified when more videos come out. And in the meantime, I hope that you'll check this channel for videos on marriage, on parenting, on sex. Let me tell you, our goal is if it's meaningful to you, we want to try to deal with it from our perspective, but in a way that honors your perspective. So thanks again for watching.